Evil After One here, guys, and today we're gonna do a review of Bulwark. 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 Uh, that was how that was being pronounced. Sorry about that. But I really want to talk about this unit because every time there comes a support unit along the way, they are generally some of the best units you can be focusing on uh, for a pull. And Bulwark is basically what we would call a Ling 2.0. He has so many good stuff. This little band of misfits. Like, oh. <laughs> so damn awesome. So let's just get right into it and talk about it. His TMR is a uh, increased spirit and HP by 40%, increased limber skates by 50%, and increased resistance to sleep and silence. Nothing special, but fine. His super TMR is a instrument that has 180 in spirit, but also comes in in with a little passive on top of it that increases equipment spirit with 50% when single wielding any weapons with or without a shield. That's not too bad at all, especially since we don't have that many instrument weapons, but the benefit here is that it is a one-handed instrument. Those are quite rare to come across. When it comes to his vision card, it's nothing special. It's very limited to the instrumental, but it's all, all fine. Not something I would be chasing or going directly after, but it will work just fine with the unit itself. So now what I want to talk about are the selling points of these units, the moves that makes it a reason to pull for. So if you see these particular moves mentioned here and you go, oh, I could use that on my team. Well, that is a good enough reason to pull for this particular unit. Like Tempest Tempo. It decreases wind resistance 130% for 5 turns. It adds wind element to all physical attacks for 5 turns. And it amplifies wind physical and magical damage with 45% for 5 turns. But what you gotta be noticing here is it's not a Magnus ability, it's not a limit burst, it's a cooldown ability. So you have easy access to it, which is great. Now, the unit is slightly designed for the cow event itself so you do have an upgraded version that's only for the cow event itself like this one where it, it basically becomes upgraded as your mole gauge is being built up it will decrease wind resistance 135 percent it will still add wind to the entire team but the amplifier is 60 percent you cannot use this outside of the cow event but Okay, pretty nice. Clearly, this unit is bonkers in Cow Event, but outside, it's pretty much staying into the meta safe zone. Uh, Gumi's way of balancing, so these units are not gonna be disrupting, you know, the meta. <laughs> Interesting idea. Um, but it's not only wind he can be playing around with, he can also decrease dark resistance when you're brace shifting. You get access to decrease dark resistance 120% for 5 turns, add dark to the entire team, and the dark amplifier is both for physical and magical with 30%. Uh, and this one you can spam whenever you want, but you also have an ice version of it. So I know some people out there has Triumph and go, Oh my god, Triumphant, Triumphant Salas is suddenly not worth it anymore. No! Keep in mind, she comes in with a 45 uh, amplifier. And yeah, she doesn't have an ice decrease, but hey, that means you can pair it up with a chicken. Who expected to see a Salas with a chicken? <laughs> and especially a chicken in a band. Uh, that is pretty nice, of course, but even better, when we are on the Brave Shift side, we do get access to these killers. Uh, uh, okay, there's maybe a little too many on the screen. Let's cut it down. There we go. Let's take one at a time. They're pretty jam-packed. So this one here increases damage against uh, plants with 150% for 5 turns, both physical and magical, but it also has the added benefit of giving the damage mitigation for the particular type. And you'll also notice at the bottom, it will then fill more gauge with 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 per active plant unit. So, uh, not bad at all. Um, as a pretty jam stack one, something to get, definitely keep in mind. And also keep in mind, you're using Limburst Crystals here to utilize these, just like Ling. That's why we call this unit Ling 2.0, because there's a lot of similarities how this unit works, like with her. So, this is pretty cool. Um, we also have four fairies. Also pretty hard to get your hands on. Uh, especially in a plant as well. It's not something I recall many units having. Not on the top of the head. And fairies can also be a little tricky. We got demons. Demons, I will say, uh, we have quite a far, er, quite a selection of, as I recall. And then we had avian. Also one that can be a little tricky to uh, add into your team. So, yeah, it's four great killers for you to play around with. And I think those makes a pretty uh, big reason for pulling the unit. But he does have an upgraded killer version if you're using him in the cow event. And that's against demons only, not for the rest of the types. So this one becomes a 200% killer for three turns uh, with a 30% damage mitigation for the particular type. Interesting. Something to have a bang of mind when you're using him for the cow event itself. 
So the next couple of moves I'm going to be talking about is not a selling point, but can be a reason why you would shift him around into your teams. So, for example, like his Limit Burst and his basic form, it restores HP uh, with 65%, MP with 35% to all allies. Hmm, not bad. But he comes in with a pretty uh, powerful damage mitigation of 60% for 5 turns to all allies. That's not bad. A regular damage mitigation with 60%? Not bad for 5 turns. And he comes in with HP with 8,000 for 5 turns as well. Not too shabby, not too shabby little chicken. But the Limp Burst does get a bit of an upgrade when you're brave shifting him. Then it will give the same amount of HP and MP as before, but it will then buff up your entire team stats with 350% for 5 turns that cannot be dispelled. And increase physical accuracy with 75% for 5 turns to all allies. Not too bad for a chicken that is not a premium unit. So it's kind of like, okay, Aerith can buff with 400%, she is a premium unit, but you can kind of like say, Aerith, I don't need your light, I don't need your fire, I will put you to the side because I need darkness. I need ice. I need wind. <laughs> I, I need to utilize those things. So yeah, you can still use them to buff up the team pretty nicely. And most damn stealers can buff their own limbers up with 250%. So the chicken is going to do quite well. Oh, full work. I just like him called a chicken. It's not every time you get a chicken. <laughs> but he'll have other damage mitigations like magical and physical as well in his kit with 50%, like this one. Mitigate magic damage with 50% for three turns and it will cure any breaks that happen. Straightforward to it. But then we have the physical damage mitigation that has a lot of text going on here. It's 50% for three turns, but he also grant a chance to counter physical attacks taken by allies, except the caster with 100% normal attack, a 50 times multiply for one turn to all allies except uh, the caster. But it also has kind of like a secondary effect where it will grant a chance to counter physical attacks taken by allies except caster with a 30 times multiplied increase with spirits, so him himself, scaling for three turns to cast the max three times. Okay, so he's gonna be able to counter a bit back and hitting at the audience. It's a pretty cool uh, mechanic, but I'm mostly gonna be using it for the uh, physical damage mitigation, I would be picking it. But a counter is pretty nice if you want to build up some Limburst Crystals along the way. Then we also have some evasion to being able to cast an entire team while we increase some Limburst fill rate. It's only one physical evasion, but it's always something nice to have back in your mind with a unit like that. Giving AoE evasion can be a big deal for certain bosses. And of course, since he is designed very much around Cal, he does have a fill morale gauge about a 6.5%. Uh, it is a cooldown one, so you're not going to be able to spam this one over and over, but he has a few other moves that will increase morale gauges when usage as well. Um, still, pretty nice stuff he's got there. So the final set of moves I'm going to be talking about is kind of like just a bonus. They're worth mentioning, but they're not perfect, but they do have some unique functions that can make them undesirable. Something to have back in your mind when you're using it, like this one. It is a magic damaging move with that little star on it. Already there, you're getting curious. Oh my god, magic. <gasps> I can add whatever element I want, and this chicken got three of them? <laughs> oh, that's gonna be awesome. And then you see the damage, 175 times the multiplier. Oh my god, but spirit scaling as well? Why didn't you tell me this right from the start, Evil? That's a selling point! Until you see it's an AOE attack. Ah, uh, damn, I can already hear the disappointment throughout the the audience. Well, the reason is because, of course, when you're fighting something Dark Vision and Cow Events, you're fighting one enemy at a time, and every time the HP goes down to zero, your unit will stop chaining. But the benefit here with this particular move is, it is a bold and strike, and bold and strike is very fast in casting, so if you can hold back your teeth and the Sephiroth's burst damage, you might be able to pull off a two or maybe even the three times cast. That possibility is there. But it also got some auto revive capabilities for the entire team for two turns with 30% HP recovery. It also comes in with a pretty strong damage mitigation for the unit itself with 75% for two turns as well. But it's really the damage to Bolt and Strike that makes it a little desirable and maybe it could be saved. Maybe, maybe. And keep in mind, it using Limber's Crystals as well. He is very much uh, a Ling 2.0. But that particular move we just talked about when it is in, was in his Brave Shift form, this one here in his, his basic form. It's weaker, but it is still a magic damage, 75, scaling with spirit, AoE, sadly, it's not a single target, but it does paralyze and confuse in 100%, but it will build up your Limbrous Crystal with 10 to the caster. Now the thing is, the moves we just talked about can actually be amplified with this one, 
Bulwark's theme, the boss theme of our band. <laughs> it decreases spirit with 80% for four turns, but it will increase your own spirit with 300% for 9,999 turns. Basically, for indifferently. Who the hell would be fighting a boss for 9,000 turns? Not me. Cure spirit breaks to the caster, but it will increase the damage modifier of these particular moves we just mentioned with a 50% on top of it for... Basically infinite that cannot be dispelled. But you will also notice at the very end, it will also unlock triple jingle. Now, the thing is, his triple cast is not something you have access to all the time. You need to use moves to unlock it. And lucky enough, there is a lot of moves that helps unlocking the triple jingle. Now, another move that also benefits from this particular amplifier is the Choco Stump. It is a finishing move with 150 times multiplier, again, magic damage, scaling, but it removes any uh, effects on the enemy, like positive effects, like boosting attack, defense, magic, and spirit, and gives you 30 Limbers crystals instantly. Pretty cool, pretty cool. The chicken got its damage in spades. Then we have other ways to kind of like boosting up your team. It's not starting out that potent only 250% before it turns to all allies, but it will increase Limber's gauge with 10, and it will also fill up Mole gauge with a 0.5%. However, then it will autocast the next turn, it becomes a 280% for three turns, and it gives you 15 Limber's crystals. Then autocast auto again, where it becomes a 300% for two turns it gives you 20 limbers crystals and unlock triple a jingle for two turns not bad at all worth keeping in mind if you can't utilize the limbers if you're using him as a buffer right off the bat this is not bad at all to use to also unlock triple jingle but also be buffing your team and building up your limbers crystals as well then he has a magnus ability that restores hp to 100 to one ally okay that's nothing special but he does come in with a potent physical and match damage mitigation of 85 percent for two turns not one turn but for two turns not bad at all it's not beating out some of the others we've seen like with 90 or 95 percent but it's still coming in with 85 percent so this could maybe be an option for you to use if you don't have those other units uh if you're gonna if you are fighting an enemy where damage is is unavoidable this could maybe be something you're lacking in your team the chicken comes in with a very decent 85 percent it's not beating some of the others but it's not bad at all and of course the chicken did have a little work <laughs> i just like it calling chicken because it's not often we get chickens or animal like creatures so it's just like i could talk about a chicken um this one is an instrumental of course and if you're fighting enemy with um with the gate you can be breaking, he can help breaking that pretty fastly thanks to this particular move and when he is equipped with a instrument. But as a bonus, he can also decrease the resistance of instrumental with 30%. And as you saw, he did actually quite a bit of damage. So for him, it could actually be a little bit official. He can break that with 30% for three turns to all enemies as well. I will generally say not too bad. And those were the moves I want to talk about. I do know there were some other moves I haven't mentioned. Like uh, he does have some decreased break capabilities, but they're only about 80%. Not really worth that much to mentioning that's not a reason why you pick and use them you would rather have another break that comes up at 85 or even um 87 percent breaks instead he's not going to be your main breaker but as a buffer he just brings in so much already there so many great moves to talk about and that's pretty much it my friends there's not much else to talk about besides this is a unit i think it's absolutely worth going for when it comes to support units they stay in the middle the longest so bulwark and the melodic mascots are a huge hit right seko yes they are they are fantastic it's great to have you here coming in and saying hello when we are just finally done yes exactly he even puts his cute little paw on and said this is a good chicken i actually think you want to eat them yeah you want to eat them no doubt about it so yeah Thank you so much for watching, guys, and tell me, did you, you pull for the unit or not? Or do you think the unit is not really that worth it? Again, I think he's actually worth it because he's basically Ling 2.0. I just, this is sicko. No, 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 buddy. Ugh. Be careful with your beautiful tail. That's my soup! Damn it! Ugh, I was planning on eating that when I was done. Ah, my soup! Ugh. Ugh, for Christ. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not eating that anymore. And I need to clean your tail now. Oh my god. Yeah, lick it up, buddy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. Cats! Love him. Love him. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for the channel. So we can laugh together in...
the darkness. <laughs>